All right, let's get this thing started. Well, let me do this first. Okay. All right, guys. Just waiting for some people to pop in. I'm sharing this stuff out. All right. What is up? Put my headphones on. I hope you guys are doing well. Just waiting a few more people to pop on. It's been a while. It's been a while. Okay, let me switch this thing up here. What is up, Song Dong, Sunshine, Becca, and Tommy? What is going on? We got Facebook and YouTube on here. It's been a while. It has been a while. And I'm doing really, really well. So I hope you guys can see that. And, you know, uh, Kurt's doing really well. I might even call him and bother him. Heather, what is up? She says, hey, show you guys uh, on the screen here. Everybody's popping on. Matt, give me just a second longer and then I'll be able to focus on completely spending time talking to you guys about how things have been, what I've been doing and what I'm up to and how did I make it? Whatever questions you guys might have, I, I, I figured I'd make this a ask me anything you want type live just to touch base with you guys from time to time and let you know how I'm doing really, really well. And uh, I really do appreciate it. I've been getting a lot of phone calls today uh, and uh, just a lot of messages on Facebook and stuff. People are just reaching out, mentioning how much the YouTube channel helped. And man, I started this thing on a couch. It literally just me just pointing out what I was going through. And those are the most raw videos of all of mine, even when I watch them. Because I was desperate, just in a desperate state of mind. And then as I got cleared thinking and started to do better, everybody was like, less and less viewers because... It's like driving down the road. I always use this analogy. When you see a wreck on the side of the road, everyone slows down to look and go, are they okay? What's going on? Everybody's into the drama. But if there's two people on the side of the road just kind of shaking hands and they're congratulating each other, everything's fine, and checking out each other's vehicles, whatever, you're going the speed limit. You don't slow down. You don't stop to pay attention. But if it's some crap, everybody wants to know about that. Everybody wants to be all involved. So. This all started out just, just pointing out where I was at, and then I made it. And it was the hardest thing I ever had to do. So uh, four and a half months sober, he uh, Heather says, uh, Tyler, what is up from Alaska? Your videos helped me go cold turkey off 100 mil, I think you milligrams, not 100% sure, of methadone. And that's that's a lot to jump off. You know, that's that's tough. That's tough, Becca. So congratulations on doing that, though. I'm, I'm proud of you for making it. Um, some people, man, like it's like, I can eat pizza and not have to have pizza, right? Some people eat pizza and they just it, indulge overindulge on pizza, whatever it might be. And, um, for me, like some of the maintenance stuff, man, I abused, I did not use properly. I didn't know what I was doing. And maybe that's why I didn't go that route. You know, I always say if, if it was something life or death, I'd do anything to survive. So Stephen Lilly, my brother, brother from another mother. He's in the Bahamas writing this. I'm jealous by your comment. Your arm should be more tan than that right there, though, Stephen. There's no reason you shouldn't have a tan arm. I saw your picture yesterday, you floating on that crystal clear water, and I was just like, ah, it reminded me of Puerto Rico for three and a half years, you know. Hello from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Anthony, what's up? Scott? Idaho, Crystal. Someone says, I love Kurt. I love Kurt too. He always calls me when I'm in the middle of playing Modern Warfare. So I have to mute my mic. What's up, bro, while I'm playing? 
<laughs> trying to play the game. See, I find ways to kind of escape even to this day. And I definitely don't use drugs to do that. You know, I don't have to. Crystal, thank you. Hey, Derek, you're so inspiring. Thank you, Crystal. I appreciate the love. I seriously do. Tommy says, bro, I've been using heroin off and on since 1988, stay clean for a year to three years, then relax. It's tough. I know exactly what you're talking about. I feel like when in my past times of being clean, I felt like I was tense, like I was trying to hang on to something and I wasn't able to just relax. And every time I went to just relax, it was a relapse, right? Oh, I just want to stop being so tense. I stopped wanting to be uptight is how I felt. Now, this time, I don't feel that way. It's like, it's like I'm just, I've accepted I am what I am and that's it. And I'm okay with being not perfect and having all the flaws that I have and just being who I am. It, it's, it's hard to articulate. So I try to, that's one of the things I try to do in my videos that lots of people who watch are like, you explain things in a way that really connect. Because I'm trying to honestly tell you how I felt. I told this to my sister, Mana. She had like nine, 10 years clean and relapsed on, on meth and uh, it was a nightmare. But it's like we're holding on, like we have to work to keep our recovery and stuff. Uh, but after a while, you know, you get beat up so often, you got to find a way to be comfortable in your skin and just who you are without having to struggle to stay clean. It's almost like, ah, oh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to relax and finally drink alcohol. I'm finally going to do a little dope or pills at first that turns into dope, whatever it might be. I found a way to relax clean and not have to use drugs. And that's just, it's tough, but it takes a long time of hard work at first to find that comfort zone in being clean and being as flawed as you can be, just being a human. That's just me. I figure that out. Okay. Uh, Cyrus says, do you think people can use heroin responsibly? Responsibly? I think you mean responsibly. Oh, ah, what kind of question is that? I mean, I can't stand the stuff that's out there, right? So could someone potentially? I don't see how it's possible. I guess I've seen people who've like used cocaine for years or alcohol for years, but they were still addicted to it. I don't see how someone could use heroin on a regular and do it and be not uh, addicted. That's just me. But I'm also, you're talking to a guy who was extremely addicted to alcohol. Almost everything I did, I've done with an addictive personality. So it's hard for me to picture someone who doesn't have that kind of addictive nature in them. Just, ah, I'm just going to do another shot of heroin today and then uh, and tomorrow. And then he, they do it for a month or two in a row. And then they just stop and it's okay. I've heard of people doing that. I just don't see how that's possible. So I guess it's possible. I just don't think it's a very wise thing to do. I don't see what the point would be to go that deep and do heroin unless you're like dying or in the most extreme pain you can possibly think of. Then why aren't you just getting fentanyl from the doctors or something like, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to imagine. Look, Stephen Lily giving me the smiley face. I, I, I'm here to talk to you guys just so you know that like I'm not here to preach and I'm here to answer questions and hang out with you. I'll even uh, share the link if you guys are interested in jumping on and uh, letting me know if you guys have any comments, compliments, questions, or whatever. You're more than welcome to to jump on into the stream, and I will I will add you down the screen. If you have any questions, you want to say, hey, don't feel nervous. There's nothing to be nervous about. I hope you're kind and respectful when you come on, of course. But uh, yeah, so okay. Dr. Carl Hart. I don't know Dr. Carl Hart. That's a good question. I don't know who Dr. Carl Hart is. You know, I do think that the substance itself is, is obviously extremely highly potent, but people go to doctors all the time and get prescribed medicine or they have a surgery or something and they end up on very powerful drugs for a short period of time and then they just quit. They just stop. For me, I've never been able to do that, but I can't say that I'm that person. So it's hard for me to know heroin. Oh Lord. I guess if it was a short period of time, but to like do it all the time and do it responsibly for years and years and years, I don't know how I, it's like, 
explaining a color we've never heard of. Sorry, Matt. Sorry to hear that you're not clean, man. Uh, CV says, a month sober and I still sleep four hours a night and wake up all sweaty. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. It gets better. Um, I know exactly the pain and the struggle of the sleep. It sucks. I totally understand. Two years clean here. Sunshine says it's not easy, but so worth it. That's a fact. If you saw the description of this video, I said nothing good comes easy. That was it. That was it. That was it. Um, I love you and your wife's relationship. You guys have had each other's back through every single thing, relapses, life in general, etc. That's not a lie. I mean, that's, I can't tell you the crap she's had to put up with, with me. And, uh, I put up with her. Don't, don't think it's a one way street, but I can't, I mean, I'm more of a pain in the ass than she is. I must admit, I I'm just so extreme and alpha male. Like I can't imagine having to live with me. It's, it's, it had to be tough, especially in active addiction and alcohol. Goodness gracious. We separated many times, but we still loved each other. We, 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 it's a crazy, crazy roller coaster. Maybe I'll write a book one day for sure. I'm from uh, Kelmsford, Massachusetts, right near Lawrence. Hello, neighbor. I think you're talking to the other person. I think Tiffany, what is up? Uh, just, just caught an arm possession of fentanyl and did two weeks in uh, juvenile jail or du Duval County jail. Sorry. Roughest jail in the South cold Turkey on 220 milligrams of methadone, one gram of fat per day. I was dying. Changed me. Damn. Shot by Cameron. That's, that's intense. Well, I'm glad you're doing better. That's, that's all I can say, dude. That's, that's, I can't imagine jumping from that high of a dose to nothing uh, on on methadone and Fetty. Ooh, I hear that um, Suboxone is like if you take it too early. This is why you got to go see doctors, man. I'm not I'm not going to pretend to know, but my I've got a family member that's was on fentanyl not too long ago, and they took they took their Suboxone four days after their last use full blown precipitated withdrawals. And he said the fentanyl last way, way longer. Yes, this is live. I want to know how you maintain. I get sober, but not stay sober. Heather asks for me, I changed all my habits, people, places, and things. I know, look, like I could tell you in one sentence, right? Or two, I could tell you like, I could tell you like this and you'd go, it's that easy. But the things I'm telling you, you can mine them like, like a gold mine. There's so much I'm saying that is, it can be books written on. And it's this simple, but it's so much. People, places, and things. The things that you do, right? Your new habits, the new things you put yourself around, your environment. All of that is books worth of in, uh, content. That's how... I've maintained by forming an entirely new life for myself. The people that were there, bye. I, I, I don't, I had to be completely selfish about myself in order to get to where I was strong enough to help others. I didn't pretend like I could help others for a long time. I didn't. I mean, yeah, sure. I gave advice as I was going along the way, but I didn't like go out of my way to try and save the very people I was doing dope with while cooking it on a spoon one month ago. Let's not be silly. I hear that from addicts right now. I won't, I'm not going to forget about you on the streets. These people forget about you. Okay. I understand you don't want to forget about them, but these people forget about you as well. And so you can't make people change. And if you keep people around, like I'm not going to name names, but I got family members. I still have the numbers to the people they were getting dope from. They still buy their weed from people who sell other stuff. And when money comes on the scene, no wonder every time I turn around, they're getting a phone call to me in my text. Yo, bro, hey, I already knew they'd been messing up, but then they finally open up to me and say, hey, I relapsed. And then they're like, man, I just want to stop. And I go, you don't want it bad enough, do you? You just don't. No, I do. I do want it bad enough. And this is what I see and not what I see. Actions change the way you think. And until you are cutting out those numbers out of your phone, until you're saying, bye, I'm sorry. Some people don't want to hear this. That's fine. I don't, that's my, that's their prerogative. I'm telling you, if you go back to my day five, day seven on that couch, I had to survive. I did everything 
to survive. How bad do you want this shit? I mean, and I get it. Some people can't even come to that realization of how bad they want. They're so deep into it. They can't cognitively come to the awareness of realizing I must do everything I humanly can to change. I cannot associate myself with these people. Not at least this, this time in my life. And maybe never once you change as a person. Because the things we do while we're in active addiction is not who we really are. But once we get out and we're at that point where we're finally like, oh my God, I can't believe I stole from my mom. I, I hurt my wife physically. My children's, my children, all my children witnessed this. I did this to me. Once I realized that, I was like, why would I want to go around these people? They're still living these lifestyle. They know what I'm doing. They know that I'm clean. Do they want it bad enough that they're wanting to reach out? Maybe that they want to get the help? And if so, send them toward a medical professional because I'm not one. That's it. I mean, it took everything. Sorry, I'm going on this rant. It took everything. I cannot say this enough. Everything inside of me had to be steered in that direction. And as soon as something tried to come in, and it tried, many thoughts, many things, many people, many places, many uh, circumstances, many stresses tried to get me to fall off that path. I had to say, hell no, get away from me. And I focused on me and I pushed. Now I'm almost six years, October the 25th. I cannot tell you it was worth every pain, every sweat, every blood drop, every dime I missed, every friend that was supposedly a friend that's lost. There's nothing I could, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Maybe there's your answer. Thanks for that uh, statement though. All right. Facts. Someone says, I'm 33, been on opiates, either pills or dope since 13. I'm sorry, Cyrus. I know that's tough. Um, that's how I maintain though, Heather, for your long, long answer is I found a new cycle and, and a path and I had to do it. I couldn't talk about it. Talk is cheap, man. And the whole time I talked, I talked for 12 damn years. I got sick of hearing my own mouth. I got sick of hearing my own excuses. I kept asking myself, I just said I didn't want to do this and I did it. And I kept on doing that. So something had to change. All right, looking at you guys, I'm sorry. I probably gave you guys a bunch, and I'm missing a bunch here. I, I told you I wasn't going to preach, and damn it, did I preach. All right, I'm trying to catch up to where I left off. Rest in peace, Ash the Cash. You know, I just listened yesterday to Goo Goo Doll's um, name. I made a video where I was giving him a shout-out, and someone commented in there. They were like, oh, oh, my God, don't do that to me. Uh, you made me think that he died in that video because I was – like just saying, man, you're my best friend and like, I'm proud of you. Thanks for going into the nine month program and being a man about it and doing something to try and change all the stuff you've been doing. And they wrote that comment. They're like, don't do that. You scared me. I thought he passed away. And sure enough, yesterday or day before yesterday, I heard that song by Google Google dolls called name. And I remember him and I was thinking, wow, he is gone. He passed. And he was trying to do the very things I was saying about how serious this is. For everyone who gets in, like so many never get out. It's it's Hotel California. You could check out but never leave. And you keep checking out, but you can never leave. It, it's insanity. And, and most of the world doesn't understand that. I understand that, but I also know that we make excuses up to not actually commit and make something change. So mm. Tiffany says, I was a recreational user for over 10 years, but believe me, it finally got, I think you mean, it finally got you, I think you say. Uh I, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Hi, I'm Lan. I'm an addict from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Welcome. Heather says, uh, how? I think that rest in peace, Rock and Roberta. Yes, the other day I caught the news that she passed away. Now, from what I understand, it was nothing to do with substances. But, um, you know, we had a, another guru, if you could call him that, on YouTube who passed away years back, not due to substances, who has a channel named Ryan and uh, he was ex special forces. Like my father's a retired green brand, the special forces. So it's, uh, it's crazy how the best of us, you know, will go. Who knows one day I may not be here. Something might happen to me. I think about death all the time. I try not to fear about it, but it's still scary. Who the hell doesn't, you know, once in a while, like, yeah, I wonder how that's going to happen. You know, you got to think about that from time to time. 
neuroscientist, PhD professor of Columbia in using heroin every day. <laughs> he ain't me. He ain't 99% of the world. I can tell you that 99% of the world definitely doesn't use heroin on a regular and knows how to put it down. Uh, there's so many, like there's an epidemic for that very reason. So maybe personalities play a role and maybe he's just this odd, strange one in a million, one in a billion person who knows how to do heroin on a regular and it's normal and it's okay. I don't know. But the deaths of people continuously doing this stuff makes me say, stay away. I just don't see what the point would be in trying to promote it or even say, Hey, let's all try and go do methamphetamine like normal individuals on a regular day, daily, but let's see if we can all try and do it and be okay. I'm not interested in trying it. You know what I mean? I don't see what the point would be of doing it actually, unless he's dying or is in extreme pain. I don't see any point why he would want to use heroin. Now he might be someone who's like suffering from like nine different diagnoses, and he's like deteriorating on the inside and he's like, I've got to do this. I don't know. But if this is like an experiment, everybody try meth on Wednesday and see who, who, who could put it down. Absolutely not. It's, it's ridiculous to think about it. Just to be honest. Uh, Caitlin, love you, Derek and Ryan Lambert. Thank you, Caitlin. Caitlin's been around for a long time. A lot of you guys have seen, seen videos almost since day one, you know, it's great to see you too. Hi, your vids are really inspiring, inspiring from south of England. Thank you so much, Lottie. Christian Heather says, no, I don't know exactly where or what where that's coming in. Greg, how can I get off the box? I've been using two years. Well, I would talk to doctors about this, but I know Dr. B talks about, he made a video on TikTok and he has a, a really good little TikTok video where he talks about this stuff. He said, if you're going to properly get off Suboxone, when you're getting off, you shouldn't feel withdrawal symptoms. And I'm like, this is interesting because I've never known how to do that properly. But I guess when you properly taper the way a doctor would recommend tapering, someone who knows what they're doing from having the experience, by the time you're getting off, you shouldn't feel anything. That's what they're saying. But how to go about that? I don't personally know. They have charts on Google and stuff. I'm not a medical professional. Uh, I'm just a guy who experienced the pain of withdrawals and suffering of addiction. So that would be my recommendation is speaking to a doctor. 100%. I don't play games with that. And I also don't deter people from going and getting on these substances to try and get off heavy fentanyl on the streets. Uh, it, it's just crazy. I went back using after three years sober from using heroin. I overdosed five times this year because of the fentanyl. Tommy, I got a friend who overdosed four times in a week to a week and a half, I think it was, but definitely four times he had to have ambulance come and resuscitate him with Narcan. So the fentanyl, and this is in New York, so it's it's no joke. Kyle, what are the ben what are benzos like to come off of? Alcohol is extremely hard. I've been on small dose for a few years, and I'm almost out way before going to the doctor. Kyle, I, honestly, I hear it's extremely painful. Getting off benzos is not a joke and it's deadly. So obviously you need to talk to a medical professional before you try and doing that by yourself. I, I always re refer that even if it wasn't benzos or alcohol, even heroin and all this stuff, man, especially the stuff that we got coming out, man, it's changing every year. We don't know what we're putting in our veins or in our nose. We don't even know some of this stuff. That's why sometimes the autopsies of overdose people that are dead, they come up and they're like, they didn't take that. They were just on opiates. Why is this showing up in their system? And some of the stuff may have that in it. We don't know, but that may be the case. But uh, I would speak to a medical professional. Professional. I've known some people that were addicted to that. There was a guy named My Benzo Hell or something, and he was coming off benzos for like withdrawing and going through symptoms for almost half a year or something. I can't remember. It's not to play with. Okay. CV saying that the doctor that Cyrus is talking about said occasionally does heroin. Do you think fentanyl is harder to kick than heroin? I, I would say it's probably harder. I don't know that, but I would say that it's probably harder be, being the pain of the withdrawals are so severe. People that I know oftentimes are going into uh, seizures and suffering with extreme uh, pain beyond their typical heroin withdrawal effect, if you will. But heroin's bad enough too. Like it's almost 
there's not really words to put into the pain that you're going through. You have to just kind of go through the moment and it's, it's extreme pain. Tiffany says following. I'm checking everybody, right? I'm, I'm going through. I don't want to miss anybody. Do you think some people may need suboxone or methadone? Absolutely, Mike. Absolutely. I disagree with abstin absolute abstinence. I disagree with it. This is just purely me looking into science after five, almost six years of being somebody who's looking into this. 100% without a doubt. And not just those two. There are other routes, right? Not everybody has one size fits all. Everybody doesn't wear the same thing. Not everybody gets prescribed per, uh, Percocets and gets addicted. Not everybody who drinks alcohol ends up alcoholic. Uh, but I say that to give you the, the idea that what I've learned over the years is not everybody is the same. Um, we all have different ways in which we react to certain things, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Plus there's, there's, it's keeping you from dying on the streets. There's so many things about it. Yes, there are people who abuse it. Yes, there are people who give it a bad name um, like I did or Kurt even did where we sold things on the street to get our money or our habit keep going. But I'm telling you, overall, looking at the statistics, those save lives. It does compared to the stuff on the streets. Dr. Hart is just saying you can use drugs responsibly and not all users are addicts. Most users are not addicts. I don't know if most users are not addicts. Uh, when it comes to heroin, if you mean like most people who are prescribed Percocets don't get addicted to Percocets or opiates or something, maybe that might be the case. I don't know the statistics, but as heroin, fentanyl, things like that, I think that's a hard thing to say. I mean, we have a lot of youth out here on the streets addicted to these very things, and the same chemical compounds are in those drugs. So if we said out of everyone in America that's legally prescribed opiates – compared to everyone who's legally prescribed opiates that's addicted. And then we look at the opiates on the streets addiction. I don't know if we could say most users are not addicts. If we compare the streets on top of those who are prescribed, it's tough to say uh, that's, that's a hard one to answer, but I'd, I'd be, uh, I'd be inclined to say most people who end up doing these things are probably uh, turning into addicts, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't die on any of these hills. I've been uh, using heroin since 88. Um, the fentanyl is the devil. You will die if you keep using it, Tommy says. That's no joke. Anthony says, what up, Derek? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you too. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Bill's Mafia. Hey, Derek, I'm from upstate New York. I was wondering if you know of any great places to go for a long-term treatment facility that's out of state. I knew you were very busy, but if you could reach out. Um, out of state, long-term I've heard there's a place down in Florida that's free. Um, I don't know if it's faith-based or not. And then there is a place where my friend Ashton went to, but it's a very tough program. And it's free, but they also help you get hired to get a job. And then you pay as your employment through that job keeps you in the program. I'd have to find out the name of these places, but I know I did a video back in the day about the the name of the, the program, he said it was so, so tough, though. They don't play games. They do they do a hardcore, old school, almost like a military-type program. But it's free. I mean, I, that's another problem with a lot of the rehabs is everything's an arm and a leg, but nothing's free in this world. So it's like if you could find a good free program, I would go on it for sure. Caitlin says hugs to you guys. Thank you, Caitlin. Derek. Go on with this, please. This channel and some others really helped me for sobriety. I'm still on Suboxone, but I've been a poly drug addict. Sorry if my English is bad. Much love from Albania. Thank you so much, Lunatic. I think I'm saying that correct. Appreciate you uh, commenting that. I'm I'm popping in to show face, you know, let you guys know I'm doing really well. Everything's been fine. I'm just... Uh, you know, doing life, you know, I don't, I don't sit on YouTube 24 seven. I, I don't work for rehab at all. Um, I don't really like working for a particular rehab. I just haven't had a really good taste in my mouth from the rehabs I have worked for. I'm not interested. It's just, they want you to go to, they want you to steer people toward that rehab. And yes, you want to help people. I have seen people successfully come out and it's changed their lives. And that's, that's what you really appreciate when you do work for these rehabs is seeing people's lives actually change by medical professionals, but not everybody has insurance. Not everybody can afford it. And 90% of the people who would reach out 
can't even get into a rehab like that. So you have to try and find state, uh, state funded stuff to get them into a detox or some type of program. And then most of the people who reach out don't even want to go to a program. They don't even want that help. They think they could lay on the couch and withdraw somehow and get it because they watched that was something that happened to me. I would not do that ever again. I don't, I don't recommend what I did. It's stupid to lay on the couch and do it. Could it be done? Sure. Uh, just not a smart thing to do. Not wise. Desperate need of help, please. Bill, um, don't know if you messaged me or anything. I don't really do this. Um, how do I put this? I don't really do this for a living, right? Like I don't, this is not where I make my bread and butter to take care of my family and stuff. So it exhausts me to, to really put too much out there of my energy into doing this. And I have to focus on the job that I do and the things that I do that I enjoy doing because uh, it's very draining. But if you need help, I do have a discord with people who do have meetings and they have recovery, stuff like that. At the same time, I would really recommend if you have state funded insurance, wherever you're at, I don't care if you're in the United States, if you're somewhere else where they have universal health care, go try to get medical professional help. Because that's if you talk to me in private, that's going to be what I'm going to try and do. And if you try to say, well, I'm going to do this at home and I'm going to do this by myself, watch my early videos, I guess, and, and try and go with that. Because I don't recommend doing that. I'm going to try and get someone to go see a professional who could test their blood, see what's going on, blood pressure, all these different things. There's so much factors that could play into that role. So sorry if, if that's uh, something that maybe I hope that helps. That's, that's all I could say is I hope that helps. It's as, over the past five years of doing the YouTube at one phase, I was really actively involved and I was working for rehab and it was very draining, very draining. And it's very depressing at times because you're watching people who cannot get the help that they would if they had the insurance or the money or whatever. And that's very tough. Or even communicating with addicts because the brain is so messed up that they, yes, I want to get, I'll do anything to get help. Then when you're like, okay, anything, here we go. You can go in to get treatment. Oh, excuses. Or they don't want to do it. They don't follow through. That's so stressful when you put hours of energy into someone and then they just go off and you can't blame them because they're, they're not right. But it's so hard. I couldn't do this for a living right now. I just wouldn't want to. Jody says, my son has been out of prison nine months told me he wants to use. He hates life and wants to die. How can I help him? Wow. That's a deep, he's opening up. That's a good step of honesty. I'd have to say, um, number one, I would obviously want to have that heart to heart with him and say, you know, what can we do? Can we get you actively involved in some type of program or something so that you don't go back to using? I'm hoping he hasn't used yet. If he does, that's even more difficult prying him away from the drug itself so that he can start working on himself. Because the problem isn't the drugs. They really add serious problems to the to the symptoms. And the problem, it's just a symptom, I mean. The problem is in us, in our minds. And how do we reset and gain control of our lives again? That's a very difficult thing. Counseling, I would say. Get him involved with some medical psychologist or something like that that can work with him to help him feel complete and not feel empty and alone inside. The reason we want to use is we want to relax. Like our friend said earlier, he just finally went and said, oh, I'm just going to relax. I'm going to chill out. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to work hard at trying to live this life anymore. Hold on one second. My brother's calling me real quick. Mike, I'm, I'm on a live on re my recovery channel. Can you hear me? Well, they they can hear you. Say hey. Hello to the world out there. <laughs> they they hear you, man. They hear you. Well, um, I'm just talking, doing, just hanging out with okay, everybody, man. talking to them. So I'll call you right back. All right. Well, good vibes, man. Love you, dude. Love I'll you, back. bro. All right. Bye. That was my other brother, Mike Callison. So I uh, hope that helped, Jody. Holly Ross. Hey, Derek from Australia. Australia. I got some friends in Australia. Mike, do not take Suboxone early. If you're on Fetty, it does not work. I waited six days, took it, and went into the worst withdrawal I ever been. That's exactly what my friend my friend said. 100%. Collodidine helps with withdrawals. I'm very careful about doing that on my own. Some people have uh, overdosed using collodidine or benzodiazepines or whatever. You know what I mean? 
Your shadow always follows you, Cyrus says. Tyler, four days clean off of heroin. I did subs first couple days. Didn't do one yesterday or today. Had trouble sleeping last night. Symptoms aren't as bad, but I feel like I can manage without any more subs. But we'll see. It's damn obsession that's killing me. Sorry you're going through that, Tyler. Get active in something else that can make your mind. Early on, I watched videos. So if I was at home, I had to watch stuff that distracted me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it just sitting there not doing anything, even when I would get bored of watching something. Hey, guys, I'm sending you the link. If you want to jump on, you're more than welcome and uh, ask questions or tune in. You have a comment, question, whatever. You're more than welcome to. I'll add you into the uh, here on the video. Don't be afraid. Nothing to be afraid of. And uh, yeah, don't give up, Tyler. Cyrus, you created a life you didn't want to escape from. Hello, Derek Lambert. Can you tell me how much cost for one month in rehab clinic in the USA? It depends. That's a tough question. It depends. Sometimes, and it, this is the crazy thing, is a lot of it's a money machine. It is. Um, there are some rehabs that will charge maybe $8,000, $10,000 a month, while others charge $30,000, $40,000. I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of money. And the sad, the worst part to me about it is, is that the mom, the dad, the grandma, the grandpa, the spouse, usually of the loved one, is left having to pay because addiction drains you of your money. So now you have this person that's having to pay for it. It's that expensive. Just depends on which place you're trying to go. And then the amount also usually affects the kind of quality that the treatment center has. And that's, that's the tough part. So unless you have really good insurance through an employer in America, it's a lot of money. It's very expensive. I weaned off Fent with methadone for eight days, start with 40 and go five milligrams lower each day. It was rough, but doable. My daughter has been using for a few years. She is only 20. It's heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. I've actually met quite a bit of young people and, and their parents that have called or contacted me whose children are really like lost control at such an early age and they're struggling. I'm sorry that you're going through that, Casey. Good luck to you. Wishing you the best, Tiffany says. Yes, bro. For me, change our lifestyle. Absolutely. You bring your clean in, in same time. That's what I do. Uh, there's no easy way to kick. You can Google and do as much research as you want, but it's going to be uncomfortable no matter what. There's no sweat. Sweet way to kick dope. That's a fact. One love, Bob says, big bro, uh, bro, big D. One love, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Bob. Do you have private insurance? I don't, if you're asking me. Do you have a number I can reach you at? I really need help. I can't go on much longer. I would get on a plane today if I could get in a facility and stay a year if I could or longer. Message me on Messenger and I could try and actually connect you with people who actually work in this industry to get you into a treatment facility. If that's something you're interested in doing, for sure. Yes, Rock and Roberta passed away. Um, is your boy. Health alternatives. Hey, Derek, I just got my 30 days three days ago. I'm now 33 days clean and I watch at least two of your videos every day. Thank you. I appreciate that they help. I'm glad that uh, they're motivating and it's from the heart. Every video I've ever done is from the heart. I mean, it really is just me trying to help people as much as I can. And then after a while with COVID, that I got laid off for a while. I started having to work in different ways. I was like, okay, Kurt, you're doing better. Why don't you jump on? He doesn't jump on enough, but he's also working full-time selling cars now. So, But I'm glad that helps those videos. You have to change everything. That's a fact. Where I live, it's everywhere. I'm known in the toxicology hospital many times. I had uh, grand mal seizures when trying to get clean or overdoses. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I'm scrolling down a little, guys, because I'm way, way behind. What? What's up, baby? Oh, thank you. Did you want to say hey to everyone? Just wave? Well, you at least wave. The wife is going to wave. She's shy of the camera, so say hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. I'll be inside in a bit, baby. Love you. All right. Let me see. I, I don't know where I left off. Okay. 
I'm going to, I'm going to go with uh, my pops from Canada, Caleb ghost dragon. The advantage of detox if actively using is as Derek pointed out, medically supervised 100%. They see things you don't see about your own body. I mean, that's just, there's so many possible ways to slip, but they also understand the beast in a medical way, in a scientific way. They may not know it like experiential, like I would, but they understand how the mind works and why we make excuses. They've been doing it for a long time. They, they know a thing or two. Trust me. Sorry, I had to scroll down, guys. If you guys would like to pop on, I do have my link here. The realest thing you said was during Kurt's, during Kurt's intervention that this is a fight. I can't fight for you. You have to fight this on your own. No one can fight this for you. That's a fact, Mike. And I would if I could. I mean, I really, really would. I've thought, this is real talk. I've thought about going over there to Kurt, physically capturing him, and <laughs> literally locking him in my house to withdraw. Like, I have thought about that. It's better that, that I did that than him die. That's literally what I thought about doing before. I've thought about knocking him out if he tried to resist and putting him in my house somewhere where I could lock him up and, you know, make sure he's fed and hydrated and stuff, but that he would withdraw. That's the, I was going that far in my head. It's that crazy. Most used methadone for fentanyl detox. Dwight uh, Downing says, I've never tried heroin, nor was it my drug of choice, but I believe a drug as a drug. If you need to get on a drug to get off a drug, I'm all for that. My addiction was, is cocaine with a capital C. Wow. Dwight, I appreciate you commenting, man. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I think it's important that we don't steer people off. We got someone in the chat. What is going on? Hey, you're on You're on the screen now. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is it Zuna? Zuana. Zuana. What's up, Zuana? What's up, man? Now nah, I just wanted to find out how rocking my brother actually passed away. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I caught the news recently. Um, someone who follows me and followed her said that she passed away. They said it wasn't a drug overdose. So I honestly don't know. And I couldn't speak to that. Um, wow. I don't know. She's not suffering now. You know what I mean? That's for sure. But um, yeah. she was a sweetheart, man. We used to talk on the phone from time to time. And uh, it's just sad. You know, yeah, that's crazy. It is. All right, all right, yeah. cool, man. I'm gonna let you do your thing. Questions man. for me? Yeah, you, you don't have nothing, huh? You're not gonna ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how you been, man? How you been? Been good, man. Busy, busy. Yeah, yeah been I'm really been, good. I've been uh, in tune with your brother too. You know, what I'm saying he's doing good too. So, Kurt's you know. doing it, bro. He's doing it. You know, and that's yeah. all you can do. Yeah. That's what's up, yeah, man. man. So yeah, I've been a couple months clean myself, man. So good. I'm going what was strong, your drug of choice? Uh, H. Yeah. 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 Wow, I man. Mean, I dabbled with a little, little, you know, white girl and all that too, but right, mostly H, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know what you mean, man. Well, look, dude, you did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and man. I encourage everyone who's watching this, including you, if you ever just get the downtime and you feel comfortable putting yourself out there, you know what I'm saying? Make a journal video type thing on YouTube. It doesn't right. have to be like, I'm going to get 500,000 subscribers and make this a thing. Like, I only have 24,500 subscribers. It's not like a, you know, massive, massive right. channel. It started right. out with me on a couch. Just, you know, you've seen them. Uh, just yeah, sitting there yeah, like, yeah, yeah. life sucks. And nah, yeah. you're definitely a huge, uh, huge inspiration, man. I watch you all the time, man. So Thanks, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you and your brother, man. For real. Thanks, Zuana. Yeah, man. Hey, we just got to keep going. We'll see where things go from here. I'm just going to keep on plugging away. October the 25th will be six years. Yeah. And uh, not giving up, man. That's cool. So you said uh, Washington? Uh, no, North Carolina now. I'm back. Oh, okay, okay. Yo, you moving around. All right. <sighs> yeah, we for a job, actually. It was I was going to be working in Florida. Um, and then that didn't happen because of covid and credit ain't the best. So I was like, damn, where am I going to go? So mom and dad have a house in uh, North Carolina, and we just took over that to rent that house. They moved out west when we moved out east, you know? Wow. Wow. All right, man. I'm glad you're doing good, man. The rest of the family. Thanks, bro. Appreciate okay. you coming on. No problem, All right. man. See you later. Peace.
All right, now, everybody else, get rid of your fears. Come join me on the show. Come say hey to me while I'm on. You don't know when the next time I might do a live, right? So come say hey if you would. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see. So, so Maddie Ice says, still a loser junkie. I'm not... I don't understand if you're talking about yourself or if you're trying to say like a derogatory slant toward addicts or something. I'm sorry. I don't understand the context, Maddie. John says, is it true that a big part of addiction is the process to get what you need and getting it ready? Um, I think the chase plays some part in a lot of people's addiction. Some people like get uh, this satisfaction of watching drug be dr blood being drawn in the in the syringe or whatever it might be uh there's like rituals and, and sometimes that chase is part of that kind of ritual of the drug so yeah that can be true i think I think that's what you're you're talking about tiffany says 60 grand through insurance 45 days see what i'm saying it's more than some people make in a year at a good job before choosing a rehab, do research, go Dragon. And this is coming from a medical professional, PA, double PhD in this field. Like he knows what he's talking about. Uh, investigate the clinicians and their track records, no matter what the cost. That's a fact. I mean, there's some bad places out there for sure. If you have state funded insurance, they will pay for detox in rehab. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's something, right? It's something. Okay, so Randy says, you're not a loser, Matt, Maddie. You might be a junkie, but you're not a loser. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> what would you call me seven years ago, breaking into houses when people aren't home and stealing and using drugs and not taking care of my kids and not paying my payments for my vehicle and uh, trying to make it through with my whole probation? What would you have called me? What would I have called myself? A loser, probably. I would call myself something like that. Today, I know what I am. I'm not a loser. I know that for a fact. But I also know I'm not perfect. I'm a human being. And you know that that guy I was seven years ago and me today, we're both humans. Both. Just needed some help. I was just sick. That's it. I wouldn't call someone who has a sickness uh, this permanent piece of crap or something like you're just nothing. They may act that way. I acted that way, but that's not who we are. That's, that's not who you are. So, uh, Maddie, I think Maddie's being derogatory, not really sure, but he can't really spell. So, um, I think you're talking about me, but it is what it is anyway. I know what I am, but uh, it's all good. And anyone who's watching the chat, like if you're a recovering drug addict and you get the derogatory stuff, don't feel bad. Like it's expected. You know, it, it's just it's just how things are. Everyone has their flaws, right? So just one of the biggest things I found in addiction is oftentimes addicts even are the most judgmental people and they really don't have a leg to stand on. Like, what are you doing, man? You, how do you have room to judge other people? I can only speak like that because I was addicted heavily for 12 years. So it is what it is. So uh, Sahib, I think I'm saying that. Derek, your videos helped me a lot. I stopped using only by seeing uh, them. I even stopped smoking cigarettes. Keep up the good work. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. I hope I pronounced your name right. And I stopped smoking cigarettes too uh, three, four years ago. Maybe, maybe it was over four years ago. Yeah, something like that. I don't <laughs> I don't have a date. I remember the date I stopped with the heroin, but I don't remember the date uh cigarettes. My wife has that on written down somewhere. Um talking about the young man who wants to meet you. I message me Tiffany and um another thing is I got to catch up on my messages on Facebook too. So there's so many of them. All right. I was able to get off meth alone, but I really needed help with Xanax. John, there's some people who need that. Speak to a doctor, right? I'm not deterring people from going in that route. I'm just saying doing that at home without a medical professional is definitely not something I recommend. All right. Going down. Chris says, how is your brother? Kurt's doing fantastic. He's selling cars now out in uh, Washington State. And uh, he's, he's happy. He calls me every day 
which is a sign that he's doing good. Like he used to not call me, he'd hide, you know, and just kind of stay in his little back cave of darkness because <laughs> he was stuck, you know? And I mean, we just kind of, I don't know, we get stuck and we want to hide from the ones we love. Ghost Dragon, Derek, I'm so proud of you. You have helped so many people, including my own patients when I worked at the hospital. As you know, I'll be teaching university again in September. Well, I'm proud of you. You, you, you don't know how to stop working, Caleb, my dad. Uh, in Canada, you don't know how to stop working, do you? You just, you just got to keep going. I told you, you know, you don't have to work with me though. That's one thing we, 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 uh, we could talk about more than just this, but if you want to know something about addiction or you want to understand the behavior of addicts and how people are, this man right here knows he understands. He understands. Mega says, no matter the views, and if someone watches at least one video, it could save their life. That's all that matters. I'm eight months clean from H now. Awesome, Mega. I'm super proud of you. That's great news. It's not easy. Hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. The very hardest thing ever. Erica says, John Alderson, awesome. Just don't abuse it, but it works. Just be honest with yourself. That's a fact. All right. Kurt and Derek are the best, Matt says. Thank you so much. I appreciate the love. Always the positive vibes. So I run a podcast, Mike, another podcast called Myth Vision Podcast. And I work full time researching and studying philosophy, ancient religions, and delving into topics such as Christianity, you name it. And I interview scholars with PhDs in the field. So that's in a nutshell what I do. But it's something that I found I enjoy doing. And it's not a lot of work in the sense that like if I were to do addiction stuff, it drains me. Like it makes me, uh, it takes a lot out of me to do this. And I have done work for rehabs and addiction, but at this point, I um, I enjoy doing what I do for for a living. And that's that's all you can do is find what you love and do it. This was just so much pressure, and you, you get a lot of uh, negative plus positive in this field, and it just is something that I couldn't keep doing. I couldn't keep doing it the way I did. So I appreciate that. Crash the party. My boy, Nate. Hey, Derek, how do other avenues like comedy, sports, music, movies, et cetera, help someone through these times? I can't tell you how much they help. They help so much. I needed those things. I needed something to watch. I remember I was withdrawing at that lady's house, watching how bongs are made glass bongs and they're just looking at different colored bongs and things. just i was just watching interesting things and then having people to talk to having a community to talk to of people it's so important for real we got uh someone in the um uh health alternatives um if you're able to i can add you in when you're when you're ready uh but yeah Someone's maybe going to jump on with us here in a second. Big shout out to Derek. You're an inspiration. Thank you, Jody. Talk and listen. I appreciate it. Damn, got no notification. How long did I miss? I think 20 minutes, 25 maybe. I don't even know. Oh, no, it's been longer than that. It's been 53 minutes. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Dakota says, what's your thoughts? I've been sober since November 2, 2020. Pushed a lot of people out of my life. A lot of those being friends. What's your suggestion on that? I see you still have buddies, bros that got sober with you, but it sucks that I've got that I've lost a group of friends. Hard to find new people in same boots as me at 33 years old. You're inspiring, man, and your videos kept me going through tough times. Um, that's tough. You know, I needed to find someone somehow in some way. And to be honest with you, I always had someone because my wife was there. She went with me to meetings. She was there to support me. Even, even though it annoyed her at times, she was there for me. But all the other people, they were kind of noise in my life because I they weren't really there to contribute. Even Kurt at times. I had to cut Kurt out, you know, like my own brother. So it wasn't always that way. It, it starts out that way. But if Kurt were to stay active in addiction, I wouldn't have gone to his house every day hanging out with him as an addict being okay and condoning that type of lifestyle because at some point I might have a tough day with the wife or whatever. And then, you know what? I'll do some too. No, I couldn't do that at first. I am the guy. I am the guy, Nerdcore. 
I am almost the guy that's on Myth Vision Podcast. <laughs> that's me for sure. Message me if you would on Facebook. I'll try to get to the messages as soon as I can. High Priestess says, I'm 48 hours off Suboxone and oh my gosh, it's so hard, man. It really is tough. Like skin crawling, sweats, back aches, can't sleep, can't get comfortable, totally know what you're talking about and many other things probably. Um, keep pushing through because eventually it does get better. But I would go see a medical professional about how to do this. If, if that's what you're running away from is the medical professionals. Um, and you told me, Derek, I'm not going there. I would say find a way to taper if that's what you're doing. And if you're already in that point, then I would just keep pushing through to the next point. Hot baths help me drink lots of water, get distracted by watching things that take your, your time away. Cause you don't have any energy. Those are a few things I would do. So, sorry. Uh, crash the party. Proud of you, man. My boy, Nate's a good guy right here. Seriously. He has a comedy YouTube channel too. For those who want to go on and subscribe to his channel for real. He helps people who are just needing a community and they don't have one and you want to go have a laugh or just almost like a Howard Stern type show at times, you know, having those type of conversations. It's fun. Go subscribe for sure. Let's see. It says, kind of advice do you give to a functional addict in a negative environment? depends on what you're, I don't know how, I, I mean, like, I don't know. You guys come to me for the advice. I, I'd, I'd hate to give you bad advice. You know, the best advice I could give you is to, if you're, if you're a functioning addict or you're trying to get help and get clean is to go see a medical professional, see a counselor, someone that's a professional. Cause I'm not a professional. I'm just a guy who made it and, damn it, it was the hardest thing I ever did. And I know for a fact, most people won't be able to do what I did and make it. So I don't recommend it. You know, um, I don't know. That's a tough one, man. Seriously. Uh, no problem. And eight, you know, man, you know, I love you, bro. Seriously. We just connected not too long ago. So, uh, you know, I want more people to find a community they can connect to. Uh, nerd courses. Ha ha. I know I'm just teasing and being silly. Well done on a long time being clean and also really love your podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It means a lot. A lot of people probably don't want to go to that. You know, don't want to go to my podcast. That's totally fine. Trust me. I understand because it's sensitive material for the religious high priestess. And, Angel uh, is it Angelique? I hope I'm saying that correct. Yes. I'm about to hit the gym. Get those endorphins, release, go to the gym, go sweat, go sit in the sauna, drink some water. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure. Christian says, love you, Derek and Kurt. Have to go back to work, darn it. I'll watch this later. Thank you for all the content. It's been a lifesaver. This isn't really like a, I'm doing a video and here I want to just let me give a video and this is what I'm doing. This is you ask me questions, whatever, and I'm almost done here. I'll have to get off here soon. But um, I love you too. Thank you for the for the compliments. You guys, all those words that you say, they meant something, especially early on for me in recovery, which is why I wanted Kurt to jump on. I wanted Kurt to do this because Kurt would get all that positive vibes from you guys. And I told him, ignore the negative, you know, like ignore the people who want to just troll. There's that all over the YouTube. But seriously, you know, he needed positive influence and you guys gave it to him. When he did videos, you were there for him. So I really appreciate that. Um, health, I was going to add you in, but you weren't. it didn't pop up your video when you tried to join me here earlier. You say, I've been a month clean. One of my parents that I'm not really close with but lives with me is using meth, I'm pretty sure, daily, and it's making it hard for me trying to stay positive and focus on me. Mm. I would break away and go and actually get, you know, some... <sighs> I'd have active some activities outside of the house that I'm not there all the time to, you know, fill my life up with to keep positivity coming in because I know how hard it is to live with an addict, whether it's a father, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a brother or sister, whoever it is. Um, yeah, I would figure some way of finding a way to fill my day up with other things somewhere different than in that house all day. Yes, Emma, my wife and I are still together. And uh, we just had our 14 year anniversary in June on the 11th of June, 14 years we've been married. 
we made it 14 years. I cannot tell you how crazy, amazing, long, and the crazy stuff that we put each, each other through, but we still love the hell out of each other. I may want to squeeze her head off and she may want to punch me. That's okay. You know what I mean? That's totally okay. Uh, we just have learned how to sometimes just shut up about whatever the argument is. And then we approach it in just a little while. We ignore each other. We'll sit next to each other, argue, whatever. Like this happens from time to time. And then we just approach it later and just, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like it, it's freaking marriage, man. It's not easy. So when you think, oh, I'm going to just start over with someone new and everything's going to be great. Flip a coin, you know, flip a coin and you hope that that person's going to be different, but eh, it may not be. It's hard having to be around someone using when you are clean. That's a fact. That's why I would get away somehow, personally. Fill up your day with things that are positive in the direction of getting clean and steering in that direction. Dwight says, please see my question at the 1139 timestamp if possible. Dwight, it won't let me go that far up. Can you possibly rephrase your question? I'll try and see if I can get it before I get off of here. Um, you feel it's easier staying clean knowing you have a following? Um, if it factors in, that's a good question. Does it factor in that like there's all these people watching and if I fall, then your pride and your ego, it might play a role. I'm not really aware of that role because I'm not even active, right? Like you guys don't see me active on YouTube that often. So it's not like it plays a significant role. Like the reason I'm clean is because I have these subscribers and followers and therefore I would never relapse because I have these followers. It might play a role though, just knowing a lot of people are dependent on me being clean. It's almost like if you have someone who doesn't pay bills and doesn't work and they're just not being responsible, but they have in the past, but then all of a sudden they get a job and they're, they get back into the active motion of having responsibility. People depend on them. They depend on them. They aren't depending on other people. They're depending on themselves and they're becoming, they're building character and they're able to build themselves up. Um, less likely are the chances that they would want to fall. If someone's just milking and leeching off other people and not doing anything, huh, what, what's it going to hurt to fall and, and relapse? Uh, so it might play a role there. It's a good question to ask. I guess we could say yes. In some way, having a following does help. But I know a lot of people who have a following who relapse. You know, they, 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 it doesn't matter. So the condition that they're in mentally or uh, physiologically or physically or whatever might be overpowering their, their worry about what people think that are following him or whatever. Look at um, who's that famous uh, celebrity who wrote a song, Sober, Demi Lovato, I think it is, she relapsed and has like way more followers than I ever will, you know? So I don't know. She, Like I said, it may help some. It may not help others. You could just comment your question here if you'd like. If you want it to be private, Savannah, just message me on Messenger and Facebook. I'll try to get to those. I do have a, a job I do for a living, so it's hard for me to get to a lot of these things. Uh, Kenny says, please, how do I get off methadone? What medicine do I need? Ooh. You're talking to the wrong guy. I'd say talk to a medical professional about how to get off methadone, but you'd probably, they'd probably put you on a tapering program or something like that over a long period of time to try and wean you. If that is something that they would think is reasonable for what you're going through, like people who get on methadone or trying to get off fentanyl and they think I'm only going to be on it for 30 days and then I'm just going to get off. It's not a good idea from what the doctors tell me. So I would see a medical professional, Kenny. Talk to them about that. Man from England, thanks for all you do. Thank you, man from England. Man from America says thank you. I appreciate it. Savannah Stoddard through here. Just sent a message in the comments. What's up, Derek? What is up, the Krevich? I don't I don't know if I said that. Krevich? Krevich? Not sure if I'm saying that right, but what is going on, my friend? Welcome in. Happy anniversary, Tiffany. Thank you so much. I'll just uh, just send a message like you just did. Yes. How is she dealing with her struggles? Who um, are you talking about my wife? I'm not sure the question, Emma. I tried to see your comment there, Dwight. It would let me, went to a doctor five years or six, about six years, then got a new doctor. Neither, neither one of them helped me. Sorry about that, Tiffany. 
I divorced my alcoholic ex-husband because he wouldn't get clean. The therapist at the rehab actually recommended it. She said not to go back home in that environment. Hey, if that's what works and that's what was best, I don't blame you one bit. And I respect that. You know, everyone has their own choices. Um, it's tough. Loving a loved one, you know, that is in addiction is not easy. That's the hardest thing to do is to sit there and watch them abuse themselves, which in effect abuse you the whole time, you know. Bottom line, if you don't want to do drugs anymore, go get help and take it one day at a time. Fact. You got it. That's the key. Having followers help me. I look at it just the way you said it, Derek. Thank you, Angelo. I appreciate that. Yeah. I That's the best way I could put it. You know, you got people that are looking up to you and I'm responsible for a lot of people's, uh, I guess you could say in a way, like I'm responsible for a lot of people's uh, getting clean. They say, oh, you're the reason why. And if I fail, right, you kind of tell yourself how many people might be affected and say, man, it's not worth it. And they have a bad day. Even Derek relapsed. And I thought he would never relapse. So I guess I will. Well, I'm not going to do that. As far as I have control of my faculties and I keep it, keep it the path I'm doing and living the life I'm doing, I won't need to. I, it doesn't even come on the horizon in my thinking. It's not even a possibility in my mind, even though I guess it is possible. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I don't even, I set up barriers, people, places, and things that I do in which that can't happen for me, at least with, with the life I'm living now. The cycle that Lance Armstrong did, blood doping, HGH, steroid, erythopoietin, I don't know how to pronounce that. Even though cheated, do you think this was bad mentally and physically? Mind you, he was at top optimal performance. I don't think, I mean, look, I can't say what's bad and what's good for other people. But for me, obviously, if I was to do stuff like HGH, steroids, or testosterone, or whatever it might be, I would need a medical professional. I would go through a doctor. And he probably was. So I can't say that this was bad for him. Some things aren't bad. Uh, you might go, but steroids are bad. Because I know a guy who did them and they did this. I know five people who did the very thing and they didn't do that. And they were perfectly okay. You could say the same thing about opiates, right? Like there's some people that are prescribed them that are normal. But <laughs> I don't recommend it. You know what I'm saying? Like not my recommendation. Fast, Randy. We lost Roberta in a fire. Okay, so we got a bunch of different people thinking different ways that Roberta died. I don't know how she died. So I'm sorry. I don't know the facts on that one. Uh, Dwight says, my question is regarding dealing with life on life's terms and the passing of my grandmother this past Sunday. I'm sorry about your loss. It's my first real challenge since I've had in my recovery, May of 2017. Dwight, my grandmother just died of uh, stage four cancer and... It was extremely sad seeing her pass. She actually didn't die from the cancer itself. She beat it. They found it in her brain. She beat the brain cancer. Then they found it in her lungs. But then she also had an infection in her lungs. And it got so bad, um, they had to put her in a coma. And it was they couldn't bring her back out of that without damaging ribs and her sternum and all that. But as far as life on life's terms, I always mention honesty on my channel. Like I always tell people, open up. Don't it, it, don't hide how you feel. You need to have some people you can be raw with, like absolutely raw. That that unburdening when you have burdens inside and you can cry to someone or you can actually go to that person and just be as real as possible and they just accept you and and bring you in. Um, sorry, I, I thought something happened to my mic. That right there is absolutely necessary. I think for everybody. And I have that, like I could do that with my wife. If I can't do that with her, for whatever reason, I have people I can call and talk to. We need connection. The reason why we're at such a uh, trauma is we just lost a connection to someone that we've had a connection for a long time with. So we need a new connection or we need to create deep connections with other people. You know, I think about my mom passed away all the time. I don't know how I'm going to live with that. That's just something I can't imagine. So I hope that answers your question somewhat. That's what I would do, by the way. I, I can't say what everyone else should do, but that's that's what works for me. What did you do for a career job before the podcast got big? I um well, depends on when. You know what I mean? It depends on when. I worked for a construction company when I was in Washington State called PSC. We worked for the state and did highway construction. 
after that, I worked for a rehab out in California called Wavelength Re Recovery. And I helped drug addicts who were struggling with addiction to try and find treatment because too many people are dying from this. Then we got laid off because of COVID. And I just did not like that kind of environment anyways. I don't, I don't like working. If, if, if I found a, a rehab that was actually ethically a good rehab and it wasn't about promoting, pushing people into treatment, like directly actively trying to promote that, maybe I'd be a lot more comfortable, but I don't, it's just not me. It's not my, my channel isn't even like that. It's like, Here's a journal of a man who was dying of drug addiction. He had all the high hopes of being successful. He was athletic. He had a great family. He had all the support. There was no reason for him to end up going in the path he did. I wasn't raised that way. I did have an alcoholic father, but I wasn't raised to be that kind of person. And I turned out someone that I didn't expect to be. And I lost all control. How do I get back? And here I am kind of journeying my, my story through all these videos on this channel of making it. There you go. Hope that answers it. Thanks, nerd. Hey, Derek, do you think hydrocodone is less severe than other opiates? To me, it was. It wasn't as bad as oxycodone, right? That's just me. I could take, and I compared it in terms of like the strength of how my experience was it, with it was. That uh, doing like Vicodin was not as potent as oxy. But as far as addictive, I don't, uh, to me, it's like all the same in terms of addictive to me. And I wouldn't have stuck on hydrocodone. I always went to something further. Mishmash TV. It's hard. I've been smoking heroin and crack for years. I hate it, but just can't seem to get a hold. Uh, uh, give it up. Feels like I'm in a prison. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it requires like a deep down committed change usually we end up in jail or something that stops us from repeating this cycle because we, we don't know how to control that vicious cycle that we're on. Um, I would recommend checking myself into a medical professional place where they can help you. There's chemicals that they help people who are in that kind of situation so that you're not losing your mind trying to come off the stuff. They can keep you kind of calm and sedative where you can actually kind of tolerate the way you feel as you're getting off. And maybe a light bulb can go off and you could start setting up a path different from the one you've been living. Erica, Dancing with the Devil is the name of Demi's song. Yeah, Demi, uh, Demi, she struggled. I used to like that song, Sober. I, from time to time, very rarely have I listened to it. But uh, yeah, she had a lot of negativity hit her because she was a high-profile celebrity in Hollywood. And... There she was. She relapsed and the whole world didn't understand. Why could you do that? What day was the worst for you when you began detox? Day three or four? Those are the worst. And then after that, it got, it was still bad, but it was like, it, it slowly in waves was going down in terms of the suffering. Dwight, keep it up, man. I have two sponsors. I was just looking for stories of strength and encouragement. Don't give up. Absolutely talk to those sponsors, open up to them. If it's not a sponsor, make it a friend. If it's not a friend, make it a spouse. If it's not a spouse, anyone that'll listen to you that you have to be accountable to, it helps us unburden and know that we're not just talking to God as we understand it, which I hear a lot of people do. They go, well, I'll just pray and, and tell that to God and that's it. And it's like, I've done that. You're talking to yourself. So you can kind of make up your own thing in your head. And the next thing you know, you're living this lifestyle again. How come you're not uh, actually staying with it? Sometimes telling another human being will actually get us to hold accountable accountability to ourselves. All right. Uh, Randy, have a nice day. And you too, my friend. Let me scrolling down. Performance enhancing drugs for optimal performance. My opinion is I don't have a bad opinion of them, but I also am like, I would say once again, back to the medical thing, like, do you need them? What, what are you taking them for and why are they, have you considered the, the cons? Have you considered the possible side effects of doing these? And uh, there are side effects that are potential. So it, to me, I'm not a big anti performance enhancing kind of guy. I just, I'm not. Hey, hey, Heather. Guys, I'm going to be wrapping up here shortly. Um, 
I'm looking you guys I whole, wholeheartedly appreciate it. Thank you for answering the question. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the love. Um, last thing, Erica says, or Emma, sorry, says, how is your wife dealing with her struggles? Like all of us, you know, like all of us. I, um, I'm there with her. I help her. She really looks up to me in a lot of ways. So she, she comes to me with those problems. And sometimes I'm not the one that you should come with the problems to. Cause I'm like, I can't answer that question for you. Or sometimes I'm not, uh, as gentle, you know, some of the problems that she has are me. <laughs> so it's like, uh, Hey, uh, what you're struggling with is Derek Lambert. So you're bringing your struggle to the very person that is your struggle from time to time. Uh, she definitely, I tell her she could use really good friends that she should be able to talk to and she's working on that, but I'm there for her. You know, I think it's important to have that person in your life. That's going to help support you in that path. Get somebody, get a friend, try to Nerdcore says, uh, Great advice. It's so important to have people close to you to open up to and be raw and real with them and not bottle up the inner demons. Thanks, Derek, for answering the question. You're welcome. Thank you, Mishmash. I appreciate it. 10 years because he wouldn't stay clean. I don't blame you. Don't blame me. I told my mom the same thing when dad would relapse. Dwight, thank you for the anniversary uh, compliment. Yeah. I told mom the same thing. If you got to go, you got to go. I love you. Thanks for making it this long in your marriage. As a kid, it was going to traumatize me that you guys were going to divorce, but I'm glad you guys made it when you did. But I, I'm a kid. I don't know if it would have been better that mom left many years ago or if they stuck together, but they're still together today. And I know my dad never meant to do the things that he had in alcohol with alcoholism. So I love you guys. I just wanted to check in, let you guys know I'm okay. Everything's well. I wanted you to ask me whatever you were wanting to and, I wish there was an easy fix to this problem. I wish there was just a way I could like a pill for curing this thing or <laughs> I don't know. I hope we figure something out scientifically that will help people to better themselves and to be able to get off and not it's, it's more than just the drugs harming you physically. There's so much more to this thing and it's such a beast. So anyway, um, I'm about to go, but I will answer hands, uh, Hazel Swords, I hope I'm Hazel Swords. Derek, any ideas of going sick three days and getting paid tomorrow? Hmm. I would get someone you know will not spend your money, will not allow you to have your money, um, take control of the money if you're already three days sick off of the stuff. Finances are such a big trigger on relapse. I would obviously say, I, I would be honest, right? And I'd say, I know I need to get clean. I know I want to use, if this money gets in my hands, I need you to have access to this because I trust you to help make sure my bills or whatever I got to pay, you have access to that so I don't use it on drugs. That's the best thing I can do is say, be honest and open to whoever that person is in your life. If you have one, I hope you do. Hope you do. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I'll check back with you guys. I'll tell Kurt to uh, start doing more lives with you and hanging out. And um, maybe when I come on next time, you guys will jump on the live and at least come pop in and show face and say, hey, and, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, but uh, it'd be cool to have you guys interact and, and join me on the live. But uh, I love you and um, don't give up, you know, survive, whatever that means to you, whatever that whatever you have to do to survive and to get clean, to try and get off the stuff that's ruining your life. To me, recovery is a progressive way of heading in a direction that's bettering your life, that's actually bettering your life. So it's not about abstinence. It's not about, did you take a chemical? Why are you taking Tylenol twice a day? Or why are you taking uh, Suboxone? Or this? It's not about that. It's about heading in the direction of bettering your life. So, you know, that to me is recovery. It's not about abstinence. It's about heading in the right direction. And you're always going to be on a journey, on a path in one direction or another. So better that direction. Love you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.